Happy Monday, y'all. It's your girl, Taria. Thank you for tuning in to another What Else Is Going On, aka We Go podcast YouTube video. Again, I'm your girl, Taria. I hope that your week um, has started off right. And if not, I hope it gets back on track for you. Let's go into the rest of the week with intention. So whatever you expect to get from the week, y'all, let's set our intentions with each other. Mine is to be hit my daily goal in terms of content uh, with the podcast, with YouTube video and my daily money making goal. Cause y'all know I'll be out there hustling, hustling every day I'm hustling. So um, that is mine. And to be disciplined and hit my uh, workout goal. So Y'all let me know what y'all's and in, what intentions are y'all setting for the week. So I wanted to come to y'all and get into just a couple of things with you. Then I'm going to come back with a more Bravo-esque video. And then I have to do the Potomac recap. That's either going to go up, you know, our normal day to post is Tuesday and Friday, but it may go up Wednesday, but I'm shooting for tomorrow, but we'll see. But let's get into this. First up, this is according to page six. Sean Diddy Combs accused of aring 13-year-old girl with two celebrities at 2000 VMA's party, y'all. Sean Diddy Combs has been accused of aring a 13-year-old girl with the help of two other celebrities at a 2000 MTV Video Music Awards after party. The now 37-year-old woman filed a lawsuit against Combs in New York federal court Sunday in which she claimed the incident occurred after she went to an empty bedroom to lie down for a moment because she felt woozy and lightheaded from a drink she had during the bash on September 7th, 2000. Soon after, Combs, along with a male and female celebrity, entered the room, states the 19-page filing obtained by Deadline. Combs aggressively approached plaintiff with a crazed look in his eyes, grabbed her and said, you are ready to party. Combs, then 30, allegedly threw the girl identified only as Jane Doe in the court documents towards another male celebrity referred to as Celebrity A, who proceeded to remove the teen's clothing as she became more and more disoriented. Plaintiff was held down by Celebrity A, who vaginally arred her, while Combs and Celebrity B, a female, watched. The lawsuit claims after the male celebrity finished, Combs then vaginally arred plaintiff while the celebrity A and celebrity B watched. The complaint also alleges that Combs attempted to force the victim to perform oral sex on him, but she resisted by hitting him in the neck, so he stopped. She then escaped the room and had her father pick her up from the party. After the assault, plaintiff fell into a deep depression, which continues to affect every affect every facet of her life, states the lawsuit filed by Texas-based lawyer Tony Busby. Busby filed at least five new civil lawsuits in the Southern District of New York on Sunday. He filed five on Sunday. At least five. While the plaintiffs are not named in the court papers, they are described as two men and three women, including the one who was 13 at the time of the alleged VMAs aring. One of the men and all three women also accused the bad boy records founder, now 54, of drugging them. We will let the allegations in the filed complaint speak for themselves and will look and will work to see that justice is done, Busby said in a statement to NBC News on Sunday. We expect to be filing cases weekly, naming Mr. Combs and others as defendants as we continue to gather evidence, excuse me, y'all, and prepare the filings. The lawyer told the outlet that he would be filing two additional lawsuits later on Sunday. The press conference and the 1-800 number that uh, preceded today's barrage of filings were clear attempts to garner publicity, Combs' legal team said in a statement obtained by page six. Mr. Combs and his legal team have full confidence in the facts, their legal defenses, and the integrity of the judicial process. In court, the truth will prevail that Mr. Combs has never actually assaulted anyone, adult or minor, man or woman. Earlier this month, Busby announced he was representing 120 individuals in civil lawsuits, accusing Combs of egregious sex crimes spanning over the course of three decades. The legal eagle claimed Combs' youngest victim was just nine when the rapper sexually assaulted him. At this point, 
the lawsuits aren't shocking anymore, which is sad to say. You know, everything is alleged. None of us were there. It's just, I mean, I know that it's about power, but it's, I still can't help but think you had money. You had power. Women willingly wanting to sleep with you and men too, sure. And we saw from the Cassie video that if not more than her, but you at least you beat women into submission, at least for sure we know with Cassie, that's not alleged. So like, and then now we're also talking about underage people. It's just sick. Like, and shout out to my boo Carlos who actually sent this to me. We were talking about it and he was like, you know, this is the VMAs where he attended with J-Lo. I wonder if Celebrity A and Celebrity B are ever going to be named. Is that going to come out? I just, like I said, I don't even know what to say. I just think it's disgusting, heartbreaking. You know, people can say, oh, that was years ago, like with women speaking out now. But I do believe all it takes is one voice to stand up and then other people who've been carrying that now aren't afraid to speak up. I hope that he gets everything he deserves. Take that how you will, but I hope he gets everything um, that he deserves. Again, with this suit and all of that, you know, this is all alleged. Um, but I have my thoughts. I'm sure you y'all have yours. Y'all let me know y'all thoughts. Speaking of Diddy, 50 Cent, this is according to Radar Online, 50 Cent sensationally breaks silence. I mean, when has he been silent? To defend his decade of warnings about caged pedophile artist Sean Diddy Combs. I've been saying this for 10 years. Rapper 50 Cent wants to make it clear he warned us all about Sean Diddy Combs' behavior over the years. The In The Club hit maker did not hold back when it came to discussing Combs, 54, and the shocking allegations against him. RadarOnline.com can reveal, look, it seems like I'm doing some extremely outrageous things, but I haven't. It's really me just saying what I've been saying for 10 years. 50 Cent, whose real name is Curtis Jackson, explained to people, referring to previous times he called out Combs and poked fun at him. He added, now it's becoming more full-facing in the news with the puffy stuff but away from that I'm like yo it's just my perspective because I stayed away from that stuff the entire time because this is not my style the two rappers have been trading blows ever since 50 Cent accused Combs of having something to do with the 1997 unaliving of the Notorious B.I.G. The Notorious B.I.G. born Christopher Wallace was unalived in a drive-by shooting on March 9th 1997 in Los Angeles at the age of 24. Combs has been accused of being a major player behind the iconic New York rapper's death. 50 Cent announced he's making a documentary about the accusations against Combs. It is currently in production with Alexander Stapleton as director. 50 Cent and Stapleton previously said on the documentary, this is a story with significant human impact. It is a complex narrative spanning decades, not just the headlines or clips seen so far. We, we remain steadfast in our commitment to give a voice to the voiceless and to present authentic and nuanced perspectives. While the allegations are disturbing, we urge all to remember that Sean Combs' story is not the full story of hip hop and its culture. We aim to ensure that individual actions do not overshadow the culture's broader contributions. Something else I thought was interesting. Later on in the article, it says Combs, 54, is currently being held at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn while he awaits his trial date of May 5th, 2025, for racketeering, conspiracy, and uh, trafficking. While 50 Cent spoke out against Combs, others may remain tight-lipped thanks to an apparent payout, according to a fellow rapper. Mark Curry previously claimed some in Combs' inner circle 
won't be sounding off on the disgraced star. He told Daily Mail he gave all the artists back their publishing rights in exchange for an NDA not to talk about him because I think he had some kind of idea that this was coming down the pipeline. Curry added, tried to cover up his tracks real quick. It didn't work. NDA don't protect criminal activity, though. So you may have signed an e NDA, but if you have information regarding criminal activity, NDAs don't prevent people from speaking out on illegal, like criminal activity, I believe. 50, we know 50 can be a troll. We know he can be a lot of things. Um, Y'all gonna watch his documentary on Diddy? I wonder, I'm wondering where he's gathering more information from because he talks about it's more than just the clips and things that we see in the headlines. So I'm wondering, is he, because he's 50 Cent, are people going to, other industry people, will they talk to him? Now that Diddy is behind bars, what have you. I wonder if any industry person that, had nothing to do with it and wouldn't be implicated, but may know about these things if they're going to talk. Because, you know, some people won't talk because it'll implicate themselves. You know that. So I don't know what y'all think. Y'all going to watch the documentary? When is it set to come out? I'm wondering, is it going to come out before? Because I know we talked about it, but I can't remember if there was like a timeline. I wonder if it's going to come out before the trial in May. Or is he waiting until after to see how that goes down and then to see who he can get to speak with him? I don't know. I I I, I know we talked about it, but again, I don't remember if there was a timeline, but y'all. Speaking of lawsuits, this is according to Radar Online as well. Donald Trump battered by yet another legal blow. Battered. I don't like how. Scandal plagued former press sued for defamation by Central Park Five, adding to six other lawsuits he's still facing. The exonerate and this this is good for him. The exonerated members of the Central Park Five have added to Donald Trump's mounting legal woes. RadarOnline.com can reveal that Antron McCray, Kevin Richardson, Yusef Salam, Raymond Santana, and Corey Wise have sued the ex-president for defamation over statements he made about the 1989 case during the presidential debates with Kamala Harris. Debate with Kamala Harris. McCray, Richardson, Salam, Santana, and Wise alleged in their lawsuit, Trump acted with reckless disregard for the truth, which he always does, where he claimed they pleaded guilty to crimes connected to the assault and rape are of Central Park jogger and badly hurt a person, killed a person as teenagers. He said they pleaded guilty to the crime um, connected to the assault of the R-ing of the Central Park jog jogger and badly hurt a person and killed a person as teenagers. The lawsuit was filed in Philadelphia on Monday, October 21st. Today, attorneys for the five men wrote, defendant Trump's statements were false and defamatory in numerous respects. Plaintiffs never pled guilty to the Central Park assaults. Plaintiffs all pled not guilty and maintained their innocence throughout their trial and incarceration, as well as after they were released from prison. None of the victims of the Central Park assaults were unalived. Trump campaign spokesperson Stephen Chung slammed the filing as just another frivolous election interference lawsuit, which he claimed was devised to distract the American people from Kamala Harris's dangerously liberal agenda and failing campaign. According to CNN, the men who are now collectively known as the exonerated five are seeking compensatory and punitive damages. Their lawsuit additionally stated that the ex-president statements caused them to suffer severe emotional distress. The men recently spoke at the 2024 DNC. They have a long history with Trump. As teenagers, they were charged with the 1989 assault of white jogger Trisha Mealy. Um, I think that may be how you say her name, last name, M-E-I-L-I. -I. The boys were pressured by authorities into giving false confessions in the case. At the time, Trump was a high profile figure in NYC's real estate and socialite scene. He made headlines when he took out a full page ad in city newspapers calling for the teenagers execution over the unaliving. Y'all remember that? His ad read, I mean, remember, once they were exonerated, remember that coming out. His ad read, 
bring back the death penalty, bring back our police. He took that out back then. Now, keep in mind, he's saying currently that he wants to give police immunity. Doing that may very well create a death penalty in the street. Okay. Tragically, the teenagers were wrongfully convicted and sentenced to prison in 2002. They were exonerated when DNA evidence linked another person to the case. 12 years later, they sued the city and the case was settled in 2014 for 41 million, which Trump called a disgrace, even though DNA evidence exonerated, well, linked and exonerated them and linked another person to the case. He called it a disgrace in an op-ed he wrote for the New York Daily News. Their case further amplified discussions of systemic racism and the unjust prosecution of black and Latino men across the country. At the presidential debate in September, Harris called out Trump for his actions in the wake of the unaliving. She said, let's remember, this is the same individual who took out a full page ad in the New York Times calling for the execution of five young black and Latino boys, uh, Latino boys who were innocent. The Central Park Five took out a full page ad calling for their execution. Trump has repeatedly brought up the case and denounced their exoneration. I just, oh. In 2016, then candidate Trump defended taking out the ad and claimed they admitted they were guilty. The ex-president's ad was included as an exhibit in their lawsuit. I just, I hope they win this defamation case against him. He recklessly throws out things that a lot of times are just not true, straight up lies. But you know what? Never forget when he said that he could go out, what did he say? He could stand out on Fifth Avenue or somewhere and pal someone and basically his people wouldn't believe it. What did he say? I want to, because I remember, wait, wait. I want to look, I want to know his exact words. Fifth Avenue, right, y'all? Fifth. Y'all should see how this came out. He said, hold on. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and pal somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. He's calling y'all stupid. Or... He's saying that y'all don't care when it comes to him, y'all don't care about right, wrong or anything because it's all about the man, him. I feel like he's calling his supporters stupid, though. Anyway, I hope the exonerated five win this defamation case. I really, 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 really do. Um, and then just want to talk about this. I was making sure. Yes. All right. Let's get into this. This is according to two fab. Jaden Smith reveals why he has been weird admits it's not exactly going to plan. The son of Will Smith and Jada Pickett Smith has been known to push boundaries in the public eye, such as carrying his own hair to the Met Gala in 2017. Jaden Smith is just trying to fit in. The 26-year-old musician and actor has taken the X to clarify his behavior over the years. The son of Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith revealed to his followers that he isn't being weird on purpose, and he originally thought it was normal. All the weird-ish you've ever seen me do was me thinking I was totally normal. So now sometimes I try to act weird on purpose so y'all think it's on purpose. But at the end of the day, I've been trying to fit in this whole time, and I guess it's not exactly going to plan. Smith clarified in a post on Twitter slash X. It comes after a complex interview. I interviewed Jaden Smith and it was somehow even weirder than expected, where he answered numerous questions with quotes from Twilight. The reporter then pressed the star on his decision to be weird following a tweet he shared a year ago, writing, actively working on being more weird, her complex. So he tweeted that, uh, a year ago, actively working on being more weird. And the reporter kind of pressed on him, like, what did you mean by that? He answered, because I went through a lot of my life trying to be normal. 
it was a really big deal for me for a long time that people thought I was normal. And that bothered me after a while. I started to feel like people didn't really understand me or see me. And I wasn't really trying to show anybody that. He explained that it frustrated him to watch people do things they didn't want to do in a quest to be normal. Sometimes it's so frustrating to watch people try to follow the normal thing to do when that's not what they really want to do in their art and everything. It's very frustrating. And then and then you see people fall into it and generations of people fall into it. So I actively try to be myself, he told the publication. Jaden Smith is about to drop his new EP, 2024, a case study of the long-term effects of young love, which he worked on with his own therapist and hopes it will give psychologists an insight into his personality. I'm hoping that I can leave enough information behind for psychologists of the future to look back and be like, man, what was really wrong with this guy? There's some serious stuff that's wrong with him. What is it? And this is me trying to give that first initial psychological assessment in their project so that they can be like, oh, he was like this. He felt like this. He felt like that. What does that mean? So that somebody could really do that assessment. It's been a process of working with my therapist while making this project. And I'm just trying to give that snapshot, he told Complex. You know, he's talked about, I believe, how his mom introduced him, introduced the family to um, psychedelics. Um, he talked about this years back. Um, and how basically the way that their parents raised them, kind of like a hands, hands on, hands off approach, I guess, letting them be them. Um, I, I pulled up the article when he talked about using uh, psychedelics. I believe he talked about it on the Red Table Talk. So Jada explained how plant medicine helped relieve her from debilitating depression, while Jaden shared how taking psychedelics helped him understand what ego was for the first time. Um, he said that taking the psychedelics, his use of psychedelics created a greater sense of empathy for his siblings, Willow and Trey. I know this. So I've told y'all before that my kids were in entertainment. So, you know, they had an amazing manager in New York. They did some amazing things, did some audition for some amazing shows that have been on television, did commercial print work, commercial, uh, all that stuff. Right. Well, my daughter did an independent movie when she was younger and it was, it's called Her Little Secret. It was an adaption of the book written by a man named Thomas Friedman called Her Little Secret. And the director, the one who put it all together, was Will Smith's uh, first cousin. And and not like, oh, just saying, oh, they're cut. No, like, his cousin for real. And I remember, and, um, he talked about, and, and the movie's actually on um, Peacock. Mm -hmm. When I saw it, I was like, but um, so, and it showed like screened in like local theaters in Jersey or whatever. But I remember him talking about Will offering to back him through his studio. And he was like, I really want to do this on my own, which. Okay. But I remember him saying that he loved his cousin. He loved his cousin's children. But there was some like weird stuff going on. And maybe he was talking about this and he was like, they just have a different approach to how they raise their children. And it wasn't, he didn't say anything bad. He was just like, it's just different over there. Um, we all picked up on that anyway. But I I also feel like Jaden is empathetic. I mean, he opened, doesn't he have like a food truck um, for the homeless? I just want to see it. His vegan, uh, let me see. I know back, okay, back in 2022, um, Jaden Smith's I Love You restaurant will give people experiencing homelessness free vegan food. Um, multi hyphen and Jaden Smith is working to wipe out hunger at Skid Row, a community of unhoused people in Los Angeles, through his vegan I Love You concept. The idea here is to bring vegan food, all these pop, these pop ups get on my nerves is to bring vegan food and compassionate messaging to help vulnerable populations feel seen, cared for, and nourished. So, you know, it's like, on one hand, you can say, oh, you know, they let those kids be grown, be adults. 
then you see a person who a, a young person who has a heart to do this. And that says a lot to me also, you know, so I don't know. Um, I hope Jaden gets the love and support he needs and feels valued in who he is um, as a person. Um, y'all let me know what y'all think. All right, y'all, that's all for this video. So let me know what y'all think about Jaden and EP. That is a long title, though. What was it called again? His EP that's coming out. Now, Lord, I just had it. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's called, oh, you know what? Mm. Got to go back this way. The EP is called 2024, A Case Study of the Long-Term Effects of Young Love. And again, he worked on it with his therapist. Y'all let me know what y'all think about the Jaden Smith story. Let me know what y'all think about the exonerated five suing the former president. I hope they win. What y'all think about this, the things that 50 Cent had to say in his documentary about Diddy and this latest lawsuit um, filed by Tony Busby with celebrities involved, Celebrity A, Celebrity B, and Tony Busby letting us know that he'll be filing even more lawsuits. All right, y'all. Love y'all. I will be back. See ya.